my dad, Chuck's story, and Sinanon's story. It's a big, beautiful, tragic story. The judge praised his early Sinanon work. He then concluded that he was sorry the program had degenerated. What happened? It was terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. People suffered. People were hurt. And he did bring Sinanon down around him. But all of us in Sinanon, he, he couldn't have done it without us enabling him. A lot of really smart, talented, educated people. That was a look at the new HBO docuseries entitled The Synanon Fix, which takes a look inside the disturbing fall of an innovative California-based rehab center. Founded by charismatic leader Chuck Dieterich in 1958, in just two decades, Synanon grew to be a multi-state self-sustaining business operation until it was brought down by allegations of physical and psychological abuse and conspiracy to commit murder. Joining us now, Academy Award nominated and Emmy winning filmmaker Rory Kennedy, also a Madeira School graduate. She's right. the series director and executive producer. It's, it's great to have you back on the show, Rory. Thanks for being on. Um, tell us what what drew you to to do this, the series. Well, it's, a, it's a, a fascinating story, honestly, and it's one that is largely unknown um, about, as you say, this charismatic leader who started the first drug treatment program in the United States residential treatment program for heroin addicts. 1958, there was really no options for heroin addicts. They either went to prison or they went to an insane asylum or they died. And Chuck Dietrich started a, a, a initiative that was much like AA, where they would have meetings, but you could confront people on hmm. their stories. And, um, and drug users started coming in and they wanted to stay. And he opened it up to this residential facility called Synanon, which was enormously innovative and very successful in the early years. So, Rory, Synanon, when you hear the word, you flash back to 20, 30 years ago and you heard, oh, this is a recuperative, a rehabilitative place with a great reputation. And so it became what it became, according to your documentary. What triggers were there? What triggered it? And why did it go on so long, unfocused, with people unfocused on what it had become? Well, I think it's it's much like um, the story of the frog in the water and the boiling water. Um, you know, it was it was a series of decisions that were made over um, many years where it became increasingly rigid, and there were numerous mandates. So those mandates started as you know things that now today many of us are doing or trying to do: no sugar, exercising. Um, and then those mandates started evolving to getting people's heads shaved and to having forced abortions and vasectomies. Um, and it, it became more and more rigid. And, um, I think you have, you know, and I think one of the reasons that it's, it's, it's uh, I'm, I think, timely today is because it really speaks to these charismatic leaders and how they uh, take us in directions that we might not want to go. And we're see certainly seeing that in national politics today, where people are drawn to these, these kind of charismatic leaders and they tell us what to do. And I think when society feels unsettled and you feel ungrounded, you're looking for alternatives, um, much like we're seeing today, honestly. Roy, wow. you're in mm -hmm. the middle of this too, given that your brother is making a presidential bid. Do you feel that his charisma is what's drawing him to get such a fantastic response, frankly, for an independent candidate? 
Well, listen, Bobby is is enormously charismatic, and um, you know he's he's very smart, and he's he offers a lot. Um, but I do think that um, you know my biggest concern about Bobby right now, who I love dearly, um, is that as running as an independent candidate, that he is going to siphon votes from Biden. And the polls I'm seeing uh, show that he takes 70 percent of his of the votes from Biden and 30 percent from Trump. Um, I think this this election is uh, is going to be it's going to happen in a handful of states and the uh, votes are going to be very small in terms of what is going to elect the next president of the United States. And so siphoning votes off out of Biden, I think, could most definitely lead to Trump's election. And of course, Rory, so much of your family has also disavowed uh, his run for uh, the presidency. Let's turn back to the film. Uh, just tell us a little bit more. This is a story, as Mike said, I think a lot of Americans know just on the very superficial level. Give us one or two things that that you really you surprised you as you begin to to, to tell it. Well, what, one of the things that fascinated me about this story is that the Synanon was really founded on, on two pillars. One was no drugs and alcohol, and the other was no violence. And by the end, Synanon had bought more firearms than anybody in the history of California, and they had an open bar in the facility. So, you know, looking at this trajectory and how it went from one extreme to the other over the course of 20 years, from the perspective exclusively of the people who live through Synanon, is, I think, fascinating and insightful about humans. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I talked about the charismatic leader, but I think the other thing that makes this series very timely is that people are struggling with loneliness as they did in the 50s, mm. 60s and 70s, and they long for community. And this was a place that was communal. And, you know, even though there people live through so much hardship and difficulty and challenges going through Synanon, almost all yeah. of them don't regret having gone through it because of the friendships and the relationships. So many great points. The four-part really? docuseries, The Synanon Fix, premieres on HBO and Max April 1st, with new episodes airing every Monday. Director and executive producer Rory Kennedy. Rory, I just have a question for you. Simple answer. Do you remember the Madeira School motto and also the, the little mascot? <sighs> Um, I'm going to ask you to to remind me of what those were exactly. <laughs> Festina Lante, make haste slowly, and I don't know why, but it was a snail. Really? It was a snail. There you go. What do you get? I don't. Get, move, I still don't get it. Move slowly. Move slowly. I, I guess the the motto Festina yeah. Lante make haste slowly and yeah. explains the snail. Maybe. Rory, yeah. it's so good to see you. Yeah. Thank you very Great much. Great to see you, and thank you so much for All this right. work. That hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.